hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video i will be going through some sort of alopecia advice just general chit chat and advice and tips and all of that so on instagram you might have seen quite recently i asked for you to drop in a little box how alopecia has made you feel and i'm kind of going to be going through them and everything will remain anonymous but also just to try and give my advice and how to sort of grow and get out of that feeling i feel like i'm now at a point where i never really let much of my feelings take over my life or living with alopecia so i really want to give out my sort of what I've learned and what I could maybe recommend to you anyway. So if you want to see that make sure you do keep watching. on my phone all of your little suggestions that you put in the box so I did see a lot of not very nice ones in terms of how people are feeling and I can just want to say first off that I've been there and I've felt that many times First things first is to realize the feelings that you're feeling are normal and anyone else going through alopecia remember you aren't the only one you're not alone in this a lot of people have felt exactly how you're feeling that is okay to feel like that like if you have days where you don't feel good I still have days where I don't feel great and that is just normal that is just what sort of comes with having alopecia and I feel like it's not even just having alopecia insecurities run through a lot of people whether they have alopecia or not everyone is insecure about something so at first it made me feel ashamed and ugly and less feminine and now I feel powerful, sexy, being bald. The feelings of feeling ashamed and wanting to hide how you look, feeling ugly and also less feminine. I've seen this come up quite a lot in terms of being less feminine but I'm going to address that a little bit later. I still probably have points to this day where I do kind of feel a little bit embarrassed and it's not mainly like for myself it is for myself it's more for other people because i feel like people sometimes say stuff like oh have you got a hairbrush or something like that and obviously i don't so like it's just things like that where people feel awkward and that makes me feel awkward even though i know like i'm not bothered at all but they think oh no what have i just said or something like that part of that kind of make you feel a bit embarrassed yeah i've been asked have i got a hairbrush before um, do I need a hairnet? All this, all of this. But obviously, it's the way people react to it that I'm like, oh no, they're gonna wish they never said that. But I'm literally not bothered. It just shows you that they don't look at you any differently. I definitely think it's not something to be ashamed of. Best advice I can give for this is once you realise and once you embrace it. It really comes across really attractive so if you literally hold your head literally high then people will look at you and admire you for that strength I know it's so easy to say that and it's really hard to get to that point but it's something to work towards and one day you'll turn around and you'll be like you know what this head is beautiful and it does seem from that comment that somebody has got to that point they now feel powerful and sexy which is amazing and that's what you need to turn it into that it is your strength and it's something that makes you different to a lot of people and if you can hold it and carry it well and be confident with it then that is so attractive not only to yourself you're going to feel a lot better if you actually value yourself then other people are going to look at you and think wow she is a badass woman i also have another one here to say that it made me feel alone like an outcast because people bullied me a lot i've also felt like i'm not good enough so first of all i'm so sorry that you were bullied uh, i know a lot of people can be because any physical difference that is different to the norm people are gonna make fun of especially if you are younger in school luckily i didn't go through that but 
it does happen unfortunately um, and that is just because you are different it, there's something easy for people to pick on basically but that should never fe make you feel sort of not worthy and I know it can probably make you feel very isolated because you are the only one probably in your school or wherever you go who looks like this and that just means it is just an obvious difference that people are going to pick on and then that makes you feel even more isolated but what I would say to combat that is to surround yourself with people who look like you like for me growing up I didn't know anyone with alopecia and then when I started this whole journey on social media I've met so many so so many amazing beautiful women who also have alopecia and now I more than ever I feel stronger like I've got a community like I've got a big sisterhood behind me like it's amazing so you really do need to get out there find people actively and fill your feed with people who look like you and that way you aren't going to feel alone and the, the power that social media can have nowadays in terms of that and connect to people to find in the alopecia community then 100% worth it disgusted and seeing my hair in the drain and around the house so I know when you have alopecia obviously it tends to go from little patches to more. I didn't really see the process of my hair fall now because I was young so I, I can't even remember to be honest but a lot of people who maybe got alopecia later on in, the, in their life they have to watch their hair falling out, they have to watch sort of their identity being stripped away from them and I can imagine that being really 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 hard and I think this is something everyone feels in the sense of hanging on to their existing hair, dreading looking at the pillow. You have to not stress about things that you can't control. Stressing as well probably isn't going to help the situation. You just have to think what will be will be. And you can't use stressing or worrying about more and more hair falling out isn't going to change whether it's going to fall out or not unfortunately your hair is going to fall out if it's if it's going to fall out unfortunately alopecia is very unknown you don't know what's going to happen and you can obviously be hopeful and wish for the best but i would really sort of the sooner you can get to grips with what's happening and the sooner you can sort of feel okay about it probably the better for you for you feeling better about yourself and coming to terms with it so i also had a few about sort of relationships and dating someone did say dating is a huge thing like relationships i struggle to open up about my alopecia also intimacy as well so personally i haven't had any horror stories when it comes to dating but i've definitely experienced those awful feelings while dating so for example there was one guy i was just talking to i met him with my wig all my makeup on and i literally shut myself off and said to myself i could never be with this person because i could never get to the point of like revealing to him hi this is how i really look like it was just so hard that side of things and being accepting of that it is the whole thing of sort of feeling good enough for someone and just being open with them I would say if they don't know how you feel then how can they make you feel comfortable or make you feel any better and that links in a lot with the intimacy part and obviously you know getting down low that's something I, I have struggled with I will hold my hands up and it's the whole thing of with a wig and makeup you feel sexy you feel good then without how do you feel okay and how do you make yourself sort of feel good in that moment it is just about being with someone and being with someone who understands your struggle and your feelings and just you're open with them as long as you communicate how you feel to them how will then they will make you feel better about it i know the saying that you've got to love yourself for someone else to love you and i think that is true but i also think that it helps if there's someone there who will show you that you are worthy of being loved and I really found that with my boyfriend Jack is that even at times where I potentially really struggle with myself and feeling okay like he's there to reassure me and it just makes you realise like you know what I am that bitch I am good enough and obviously we've got mention of intimacy and wearing a wig 
um, and I think as long as your partner knows about you wearing a wig then it shouldn't be that much of an issue. I think you do have to be open with your partner with that one, is telling them look I wear a wig, don't pull my hair. But just you know, secure it down, get some tape, get some glue on there and you're good to go. There's a few things on this one. Defo affected my self esteem, particularly with boys and new people. However, I'm also so much stronger and accepting of others. I feel like I have a new perspective on life and I'm much more accepting of differences. So I'm grateful. This thing is affecting your self esteem with boys, new people. So I feel like we've mentioned the boys dating side. New people 100% feel that. If you followed me and you know, You've watched some of my videos about when I went to uni, that was something I fully experienced. And it's just the fact of going from your comfort, out of your comfort zone, with completely new people. And it can't be done for anyone, but I think just because we are physically different, we don't fit the norm of everyone else who's probably in that room, you're gonna feel like a little bit of an outsider. And I think it is just about letting your personality shine through and holding your head high. Don't let your insecurities sort of take over and stop you from meeting new people and feeling like a confident badass bitch that you should be. I wish I could take my own advice sometimes, but yeah, that's what I could say for that. Then the thing is, obviously, she's so much stronger and accepting of others. That is such a massive thing is you're a lot more accepting of other people's differences because you've went through something yourself and you realise how being different can make you feel. You really don't judge a book by its cover. I really feel like sometimes when I go out with with my wig and with makeup, I get a lot more sort of stares and people like saying stuff about us. I'm really conscious of people saying stuff about us. That's one thing that alopecia will probably give to you. Yeah, I just notice people talking about us and I just think people look at us and think, you know what, she looks like an absolute bitch. I think like they wouldn't dare say anything about us if I didn't have my wigs. Sometimes, get a lot more chatter when I wear a wig than when I don't so god knows god knows being more accepting of differences and you can relate a lot to other people's struggles and you definitely have that perspective of not judging people like this one sad angry embarrassed but also empowered proud and beautiful it's a roller coaster you got that roller coaster bit right absolute nail on the head the one for me pretty hot recently but of course I have some days like really alopecia 100% relate I feel like everyone can understand that like some days you just feel like poop and then some days you feel amazing and it is about just embracing it and having those days where you just want to sit in bed and eat chocolate and cry everyone does that right firstly oh this one firstly uncomfortable now with people like you I feel like a queen that literally makes my day makes everything that I do what I do just worthwhile. I could see people with alopecia kind of doing what I'm doing, being so open on social media. I would have loved my life. I would have thought I was that bitch growing up and I feel like we should have that. We shouldn't have to feel insecure for all of our grown up life. You you just need those sort of not role models but like people to look to and to realise like she is killing the game. So can I. So it makes me worry I'll pass it on to my child and see him struggle as I had. I mean I don't have a child so I can't relate in that sense but I can understand that being hard. I know other people who do have children who have said that as well but it is a, a matter of fact of if it did happen it's not something you can control and you can't stop your life, you can't stop yourself having children because of that fear that is unfair to you and you shouldn't blame yourself at all but I really do think it's a fact of you will be the best mentor and the best mom you can be for someone. It's not you that's the issue, it's the world around them that's the issue who is giving them chip or making them feel bad for having alopecia. You shouldn't have to feel because we're different it doesn't make you any less human. It's definitely an issue with the world so you do have to remember that. I feel like the world's getting better and more accepting but again that's not your problem and I think you'll be the best person to be there for him just make sure he knows he's loved and beautiful just the way he is with or without hair nothing can stop them not even the hair or having no hair how do you manage people staring thank you for doing this and being so open you are very welcome the staring part that's something probably bothered me the most and I've experienced the most and I think first thing is this is advice that my mom gives us and it's top-notch advice so 
you need it, you need to hear it. If someone stares at you, just smile back at them because it catches them out the stare and they're like, oh shit, I'm staring. And it also makes sure that they like realise and sometimes it can turn that very sort of negative thing that you might view as negative into a very big positive. So might as well just give them a little cheeky smile. But it's also good to have someone maybe he's with you, who you feel comfortable with, because I know sometimes when I'm in the supermarket and just walking around, I've got Jack, my boyfriend behind us, and there's someone literally like gawking at us, and he'll just pop in and be like, can I help you? <laughs> so it's good to have that as well, have that little support system. Grounded on what is really important in life, 100% agree with that and preach it, honestly, yes. It does make you realise that like, at the end of the day, I'm not disregarding, having alopecia is hard but at the end of the day it's hair about this just listen to this i am not a queen i am not good enough because i don't have hair right say it again i'm not good enough because i don't have any hair i can't do that because i don't have any hair i can't go and achieve whatever i want to because i don't have any hair like how what what why do we think that and it's just so so wrong it just makes you realise like you can still achieve anything that is that mental hurdle but physically you have to like there's people out there who can't walk who are missing limbs who have diseases that they will die from yet all we have is no hair and it's just something to make you realise what really does matter in life and you literally just need to embrace and live your life don't let your hair stop you well this is one i want to address as well is i feel like i was losing my femininity as a woman my biggest struggle is to go to the beach without my scarf 100 percent feel this 100 percent it is because stereotypically long luscious hair is linked with females and being feminine and blah blah blah, blah. but I feel like we're breaking the mould a little bit. A bald head is becoming a little bit more fashionable for women. But we do obviously have a long way to go. And I do think obviously that link to femininity and your hair is a huge thing. I feel like with me, I was a swimmer if you didn't or didn't know. So I swam for many years. And it gave me quite broad big shoulders which I felt very manly with. So I really feel like sometimes I just need to have hair to like cover them and have something to flip about which I'd still feel to this day, but it is a massive one to overcome. But again, I would probably say hold your head high, hold it with confidence and embrace it and you'll just kill it, 100% kill it. But one other final thing I want to address is dating is always scary for me because I never know when to tell people and if it will put them off. I feel it. Honestly, everything you have said, guys, like, I feel it. It is that absolute fear of rejection, like I've said. It's the fear of someone looking at you and not finding you attractive for something that's out of your control. But put yourself out there and you'll realise there is little gems out there who will love you for you, who will find you attractive. And I always say, tell them and be open and honest from the start as soon as you can because... You're just going to dig yourself a hole, you're going to make yourself feel worse the deeper you get as well. It's hard to then come back from, I would say, and it, then if you tell them straight away, they can make a decision if they do want to continue or not. And the end point is, just think of it as a type. You might not find a boy with long hair very attractive, whereas he might find a girl with short hair, no hair, not very attractive. So it works both ways in a sense and that's the way you need to think of it. Oh, you've got to find your right flavour as well as them finding theirs. But yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I did have a few others but it was along the same line so thanks for everyone who did submit something. Hope you have found this video a little bit useful. I know I've probably just blabbered on but I've tried to be as positive and constructive and give the best advice that I could give for you all so I hope it helps someone out there. If you want to get involved with any little more challenges or videos like that that I do I normally will post it on my insta so make sure you go follow my insta it's danny at danny g makeup you'll see a lot more wig and hair and makeup stuff over there as well um, so make sure you go follow. I would love if you would give this, th this video a little thumbs up comment down below let me know if you've got any little thoughts or you want to add any advice that's a good idea actually comment down below positive thoughts 
positive things, things that have helped you and something you want to give to someone else who's maybe struggling. So let's fill that comment with lots of positive things and positive things and advice to say to people so that anyone who comes on here just for a little pick me up can read all of those and realise you know what I am that bitch I am that bitch but yeah thanks so much for watching guys I would love if you would subscribe to my channel and click that bell button so you don't miss any future videos thanks everyone and I'll see you all next time